Now, when it comes to this build video, I'm going to do right by y'all this time. Because the last few build videos that I've done, I haven't shown you the badges because I'm always assuming that most of you have your personal badge loadouts that you like to go with yourself. And then also I didn't show you the final product at 99 overall once we go into the park and show you all the badges that I have equipped currently and the progression and what it looked like at the final stage. So today, man, we're gonna take our time with this video and I'm just gonna give you a complete rundown of this combo forward build. And the reason it's called a combo forward because I feel like it isn't named properly uh the skill set that this build had is very wide ranging and i feel like there's something that 2k missed when it came to naming this build so with that man we're going ahead and getting to the process off the rip obviously if you want to build this build the way i did we're going to start off at the shooting guard position man and the focus of this mainly goes around i wanted to be a true wing player a lot of you that have been supporting me for the longest have noticed that i want to play the shooting guard or the small forward position so i want to be more of a wing player somebody who's going to be guarding the best offensive guy most likely but also can help on bigs in certain situations like that so with that now it's that time we go ahead and try to create this ourselves, and just to show you guys how I went about my thinking with this. Now, when it comes to the skill breakdown, obviously you guys probably already know what we're going with, and that is the playmaking and defending pie chart. Uh, this is probably the best pie chart for me personally now, because I have to have a build with defense. I know some people feel like it's better to have higher playmaking and shooting, but I feel like even with the ability of me having tight handles and downhill and quick first step, that's really all I need to in order to make the plays that I wanna make. So what you're going to do is get the playmaking and defending pie chart. Now, this is where it's going to separate a lot of people here. Some people prefer the speed pie chart and it's respectable, right? But when it comes to playing defense in this game, the one thing that I feel like you really see a difference with most builds are the vertical pie charts. And the reason is that is because you get a lot more boards, but then also those blocks and those crazy chase downs happen with this high vertical rating. So with that, man, we're going with the speed and vertical pie chart on this one. Now, as far as the breakdown, it's very similar to how I had my two way slasher with that. And so I want you guys to keep that in mind as we're building this up slowly and surely, because I remember the last time we did this, a lot of people were confused on how I had this set up all the way through and et cetera, et cetera. Now, the difference with this build, right? In NBA 2K, I noticed this year, you have to sacrifice something to get what you really want. And if I really want to be a wing build, now what a wing is, is basically somebody that's not going to be the point guard of the team. They're not going to be the primary ball handler. They're technically is going to be secondary, but also be more of a score off the catch and shoot or off plays, just driving to the rim or cutting to the rim. So we're going to suffice at non playmaking badges and you're going to see why here shortly. Now, as we get down the perimeter defense, lateral quickness, steal, block, defensive rebound, now we get a chance to get 20 defensive and rebounding badges, which is a good look because I feel like this is a sweet spot because that 20th badge is typically a tweener badge that I rotate between like moving truck, defensive leader, chase down artist, pogo stick, off ball pest, whatever the situation may need to be, I feel like 20 is that sweet spot. Now, as we see the setup, this is what's maximum for me, right? because I want to be a wing defender, but also a reliable scorer by any means at this point. So you see now we'll have 91 speed, 61 strength, 88 acceleration, 94 vert. That's gonna change here shortly. So what we're gonna do is go with a built body type personally, then we're raising it to six, seven. Now I know a lot of red flags are probably going up for you guys just because of the hit you take in every other area. But with that guys, I noticed with NBA 2K is that contextually, uh, body size means so much. I didn't realize it until maybe a couple of weeks ago when I was just going against a bunch of bigs that had bad ratings, but the fact that they're big, they make such an impact on the floor. Now, the weight we're sticking with on this is 6'7", 182. Now, you see we get 84 speed, 85 excel, 87 vert, and that 57 strength. So, that's a hot spot for me right there, 182. Because you see, if we go down to 181, you get 56 strength. If you go lower than that, you really don't get any benefits. So, 182 is the sweet spot there. Once we get to this point, we just go all the way to minimum wingspan. And I'm gonna show you the build at 99 just to break it down to you, man, because 
I don't want you guys feeling like you're unaware of what this build's potential really could be. So you have a minimum wingspan. This is an extremely impressive layout right now because for each play style, you guys, if you feel like taking shots on the move, shot creator. If you guys wanna break people off, hey, playmaking, defending, slashing. This is honestly the best wing setup, I believe in my opinion, because I don't technically need a sharp takeover. I feel like it's not that beneficial. And rim protector, hey, it's fine, but I'm not gonna be technically playing that role. So with this, man, we're going with the lock takeover. And now you see here, the comparisons is a Kobe, Victor Oladipo, and Jalen Brown, but you see the slasher layout. So let's go ahead and get into the final version of this build that we have currently. So this is the build at 99.9 overall. So I'm at the final level with a plus five boost and everything to this build. And this is how impressive this build is at 6'7", now 182. Now it's a major difference, obviously. But you see, we get the 87 driving dunk, 82 driving layup, but you still are respectable from the three point line. You're more than respectable, honestly, because you still get 10 shooting badges, obviously, that you saw before, but a 72 three ball, 79 mid range. And then you see, as we're gaining our takeover, this ball handling is actually getting better. And once we get to that point, we're actually speed boosting with a 6'7 build that has solid defensive ratings overall to be a perimeter defender. Now you can't sleep on the physicals because 93 speed, 94 acceleration, 67 strength, man, it's just ridiculous with the 96 vert. And of course, defensively, you get 84 perimeter D, get an 83 lateral quickness, and both your still and block are in the 80s. And that makes a huge difference with chase downs, rim protection, and everything else. And I'm an absolute horse grabbing those defensive boards out there. But as far as the badges now, this is what we want to take a look at because I've left this out of many of my videos beforehand. And I know you guys have been wanting to see what do I typically rock with. Now, something I've noticed with NBA 2K20 is that this badge here does not light up but this badge really does make a difference because I took a maybe two week period and I stopped running with slithery finisher. And I noticed I was just getting hacked at the rim, a lot more contact, missing a lot more finishes, especially even with my 6'5 builds. I put this thing on gold and I started catching bodies. I started getting some crazy layup animations and I decided to go all in on slithery finisher. If you have the ability to put this badge on Hall of Fame, by all means do it, I promise you. It's the most slept on badge probably in NBA 2K20 as far as finishing. Then I go with Fancy Footwork, Contact Finisher, Relentless, and Acrobat. The main reason I use Acrobat is because after you hit a Fancy Footwork move, this is gonna boost the finish to that move over consistent or pro touch. This is just boosting the ability to make the layup, period. So most of us are already hitting a Euro step, a hop step anyway. So with that, I might as well add the badge to it. And Relentless Finisher is just helping with that stamina portion of it, especially in those playmaking ability situations where I have to finish after I make the play myself. Now shooting badges. Now a lot of people may disagree with this, but I'll go ahead and show you something really quick after we talk about our shooting badges. Now I go with catch and shoot, obviously because I'm a wing player. Uh, corner specialist, of course range extender is gonna help with hitting those hash shots that I need to be taking from afar. Volume shooter, especially after I get after two or three jump shots into the game, this badge is lighting up consistently every time and dead eye, we all know what that is. But the reason I don't have Hot Zone Hunter and I have Corner Specialist instead, guys. So now we're at the roster menu and if you go into your settings and you go to roster, you'll be able to see your Hot Zones rather that's in the NBA, Park, or Pro-Am. Now with this, this is what it's like for me in the park. I feel like it's not beneficial at all for me to put on Hot Zone Hunter because I already have the corners and then I don't have anything at the top. I don't have anything in the mid range. So I might as well just abuse the fact that corner specialists will take up three of those zones on each side of the corners. And then also range extender is helping me on the wings. So with that guys, I feel like Hot Zone Hunter isn't necessary. Now, this is my advice to you. If you feel like you don't have your hot zones after you check, don't go all in on that badge and at least add some to volume shooter and corner specialist. Those are gonna be the two on top of range extender that give you more benefit to your build outside of hot zone hunter, which 
a lot of people don't have their hot zones and I see so many people miss shots when they have that badge perped out. Now as far as my playmaking badges, this is what I rely on mostly each and every time I play because Ankle Breaker still freezes people although the community is pretty much against this badge for some reason this year because they feel like it doesn't work. But with that and quick first step, I do find myself in a lot of situations where I'm freezing people. Tight handles and unpluckable, especially for a build with right around 83 ball control. And as I'm gaining takeover, I'm getting to that point I can speed boost with a 6-7 build. Hey, it's beneficial. And of course, downhill on a build like this already has 83 ball handling with 93 or 94 speed. I'm just getting even more of a boost and that's a big train coming down the floor getting ready to make a play at any means necessary. And as far as my defensive badges, this is what we're working with currently. Now, like I said, this typically rotates, but now that I'm a true wing player, I notice even with moving truck, I find myself in situations going against playmaking glasses or glass cleaning lockdowns, guys who want to try to challenge this build in the paint and when they do, Typically, this badge goes insane for me. Now, I already has 64 strength or 67 strength, but with this, I'm already getting a boost to that ability to have strength. So guys, I'm becoming a brick wall in there. And if they pick up the ball, I'm also nudging them back, forcing either traveling violations or adding with my clamps animations that I typically wouldn't get. Now you see chase down, intimidator, pickpocket, interceptor, and then rim protector. Hey man. These are the badges that I'm running with on the defensive side currently, especially when I'm playing in the park. Now, if I'm going into Pro-Am, this is going to Hall of Fame, and then I'm dropping probably Pogo Stick all the way and going in on Interceptor, and then this is the lineup I'll go with there if I go into Pro-Am. That way I can have better opportunities to steal those passing lane opportunities, and if Big starts setting those cheesy screens, you know we're ready for it. But with that, man, Honestly, it's just a solid look to have this build at 99 overall right now. Now, I know this was more of an informational style of video. I really didn't have a lot of funny moments, but I wanted to be clear and to the point for all of you that are interested in making a wing build. Like I said, this doesn't fit everybody's play style, but I figured out when I went back to NBA Live when I started making videos for two weeks and then also just playing around with 2K that I really wanted to be a taller build. And with that, I noticed in 2K19, I had a 6'6 build that I truly enjoyed a lot. Also had a 6'7 shot creating defender that I really liked a lot too. So with that guys, man, I just wanted to go ahead and let you guys know that if you want to be a true shooting guard, small forward build, it's possible in NBA 2K20. You just have to grind it out. Make sure you get to 99 overall and give yourself the best opportunity. But with that, guys, if you made it to this point in the video, make sure to leave two-way in the comment section. Your boy Till would truly appreciate it. And also, like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications. That way you'll always be notified when I upload an NBA 2K20 video. Hey, man, I truly appreciate y'all, and I'll see you in the next one.